Hi guys, I have here with GuitarMessenger.com. We're at NAMM 2014 at the Kemper booth with Christoph Kemper himself. How are you? Hello. I'm fine. Tell us a little bit about the company, how you got started with it, and you know what inspired you to come up with this the Kemper profiling amp. Ah, okay. So uh, some of you might know that uh, we're in business actually since um, pretty much 15 to 18 years right now uh, because we do the um, access virus synthesizer. So yes, we uh, are oh, okay. a synthesizer company as well. So we don't we don't exhibit the synthesizer here right now. Uh, but we've been doing this since like uh, 1997, oh, okay. right? And then one year, okay, we moved over to the guitar world. Mm -hmm. So what, what inspired that move? Um, actually, I um, well, we have we have been making synthesizers for like quite a long time, and I thought like it would, would be very interesting to do uh, like some new stuff, mm -hmm. right? And I always had uh, guitar amps in mind. I'm not a guitarist myself, but I, I've been producing stuff, and I always love guitar sound, distorted sound, and um, that has always uh, kicked me uh, in a way. So, uh, well, someday that was, well, it's quite a long time ago. It's, uh, I think, 2006 when I started to uh, do like research uh, in guitar amps and stuff. Also, I thought there's like a bit of a gap in the in the industry in a way that I could see that in 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 a decade uh, where uh, guitar, uh, digital guitar amps already existed. I right. mean, we're not the we're not the first guys doing that. Uh, I could see that um, it was not really accepted by guitar uh, by by guitarists. Right, mm -hmm. the, the the tube amp uh, was still uh, the the top thing uh, right. to play. And I thought, well, um, maybe we can change that, because, like, the whole world gets digital, and digital has has its um, it has its advantage mm -hmm. uh, in, in in many ways. And the the tube technology, which sounds great, it is a technology from well um, well from like 60 years ago, mm -hmm. right? 60, 70, 80 years ago. Right. And uh, I thought, well. How can we bring this into the into the present? So this is this is how I started. Uh, I did lots of research, and then I I was happy to invent the profiling, right? Because um, I thought a good guitar or a good digital guitar should sound like a tube amp, of course. Mm. Uh, and the best thing is if it sound not just like um, a tube amp, but identical. Mm. And there's what is identical to a tube amp because we all know tube amp can sound there's there's in uh, there's an infinite number of sounds that tube amp can produce even though there's like maybe a limited number of tube amps available right but the infinity comes from the way uh, you you uh, you choose the microphone you position the microphone the way you, you you select the speakers and all that stuff so how can we be identical there's only one way um, we we let the people um, make the model at home from the amp they love mm -hmm. right and that is profiling and then our goal was to sound identical and this is what we achieved right on so you know an interesting question that i think a lot of people are thinking about you know the fractal axe effects is on the market and that's the other really strong unit that's oh, yeah. that's that's doing a great job of digital modeling however that one whereas that one's modeling you're capturing exi existing profiles so I guess the way to get there is a little bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit different. You you go from it's not that like modeling is uh, you you uh, you get a model of an amp that is presented to you. Uh, you also uh, add, um, for example, impulse responses of speakers to that and combine that, which which is a very good thing. Um, and you 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 also get to this this sort of infinity of sounds right. uh, with that. We choose to we choose the different way because I thought modeling uh, modeling is great and we also do modeling uh, like the the stump boxes the the distortion right. pedals they're all it's 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 classic modeling mm -hmm. while uh, from my perspective classic modeling is uh, building something up and listening to it uh, and and tweaking it uh, until it sounds uh, identical. So it's not it's not a real scientific approach that I do, okay, yeah. uh, but but it's uh, I think it's uh, fine. 
uh, uh, how to do that. that. That's about modeling, but it is modeling. I think is a lot of work because the, if if we had a modeling amp, uh, there would be like more and more requests coming. Yeah, modeling this and modeling that. And that that that's a lot of work. So you really run after that. So I thought profiling is cool because once this process work works, pretty much my work is done, mm -hmm. and because everybody then can sort of a model mm -hmm. and it's not only just a snapshot that you do because you really can go from that you can, you can really consider it as as a model because we have like various controls to then modify the sound right right so and I, I thought it's a good approach because uh, we have such a high variety of of M let's say M models now of uh, uh, of manufacturers that I, I didn't even know the name of Right, which is which is cool. So I I am even learning uh, yeah. with that, and it's 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 a very nice process. There's a lot of non nonlinear qualities about tube amps. You know, you oh, turn yes. up the the master volume, it responds very differently. You know, the EQs even react differently at different volumes, and there's lots of those things. So, do you capture a specific setting when you do this, or is it something that you can adjust afterwards as well after you do the capture? You can adjust it afterwards. We have okay. we have a whole bunch of deep controls. Uh, in, in our amplifier section, where I can, when, once you have that capture model, you can really go from there and, and uh, change the way of distortion, change the way how, like, how the guitar gets into the distortion, uh, and so on. So, so you can like, really go from there. Right? So, and it's, um, in the end, you, you might get a, a, a much larger variety than modeling. Because also, well, also modeling is pretty limited. You also like with very good modelers, you get like many parameters where you can like tweak the sound. Um, but still, there's a certain, there is a certain limitation about that. Like you get a number of, um, yeah, you get a number of parameters. They they're often like in, independent. So uh, you need some skills to get like a good sound that, good sound of that that differs from the original model. Um, with with profiling. Uh, and if you don't use your own prof profiles that you've made, you have such a huge number of prof profiles where you can start from. So you don't have to tweak too much to get the sound that you want. I think that that's a big advantage. Yeah. You have a tube amp that you're micing up. You know, that's go amp to mic is going through your preamp and it's going to your to your studio. You're listening through your monitors. Same setup with a Kemper, and you're A Bing them. What kind of differences can you hear with your ears knowing? The camper profile. Okay, yeah. Uh, some sometimes you hear no difference at all, and sometimes you might have like a little difference, maybe in the bass response that that is easy to compensate. And sometimes, well, we we often had uh, uh, guitarists saying that in a way uh, they like the the profile better than the original. That's Something, cool. Yeah, in a way, I didn't like it too much because I, I wanted to be equal. Right, it wasn't, it wasn't a goal. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to be equal and not better. Right. Uh, but still, I liked it the way it was, and and I mean the direction uh, that uh, that it was. Um, so it is, it is. You can you nearly can't hear a difference, and when you hear a difference, uh, you can tell that this difference is not about quality or feel or sound. It's just maybe something what differs more is the way you play right okay. so sometimes an a b comparison is is pretty hard to do because every time like you repeat you repeat a phrase to do the a b comparison you differ more than the amps right also we had, uh, there was a nice story uh, that was like one or two years ago ah, it's two years ago we um, we had a profiling session uh, in a studio and we were uh, about to profile a Marshall amp, and well, we did profile it. So I started the process, and then the guy said, "Okay, okay, let's go for uh, din uh, let's go for lunch, okay, right now." So okay, I okay, I said uh, I was I said I was in the middle of profiling now. Yeah, whatever, we can continue later. So we got off and came back into the studio one hour later, and then I and then I did the AB comparison, and the sound of the original Marshall had migrated so much just by not it was not even heating it was because it was heated up already but it was so different that we had to re that 
I had to take the profile again, and that was that was amazing. This wow. is something that you would never uh, notice right. when you play by an hour. So I have a Marshall in it, like day to day. You know, one day I'll turn on, it'll be slightly different. But I didn't realize that like, even hour to hour, you can yeah. feel that much of a difference. It's yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah. So, so, well, to answer that first question is yeah. like, how, what is the difference? I, yeah. I can tell there's like nearly no difference. And if if you can hear a difference. Your amp might even differ more if you if you let it sit for an hour and That's do it. nothing, not even like heating it up or, or cooling it. You know that that was an amazing experience uh, yeah. for me. <laughs> so what's what's in store for you for 2014? Well, we have uh, we uh, continue to do uh, software updates that are downloadable for free, and uh, this year we um, uh, do we do some stuff for uh, bass players. Oh, okay. Bass players have already taken over. I see the camera guys. He's a bass player too. <laughs> he Hello. is a bass player. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, bass players ha have taken over already. Yeah. Uh, since like two years. Uh, but well, we we've been busy with other stuff uh, in the past. So now it's the year maybe for the bass players. <laughs> okay. And um, so we have uh, we at the moment we are collecting profiles for bass players. Uh, and also, I have done like two effects that are dedicated for bass players. I did the analog Octaber, okay. right? Like the analog circuit for Octavers. Uh, so it sounds really good and has uh, less tracking problems than the original. Right, that's the biggest issue with Octavers. It, it is an issue, and uh, I have really analyzed it. And I must say, uh, I can't blame the guys who, who did and invented the analog Octaber because it was. It was a huge effort, even in the digital domain, to to get away from these tracking problems, which was very surprising for me. Uh, well, but I managed to, to really to deal with that. And also, we have um, uh, for bass players, if they want to, we have an alternative signal flow. Because uh, if you want if you want to do um, like distortion or other fancy stuff on the bass, you often lose the the bottom end, uh, the bottom end of your of yeah. your bass. Guitarists can do this all the time because they still have a bass player uh, uh, doing the fun fundamental uh, uh, sound, but if, you, if the bass players do, they, they I think they will get in trouble. A lot of times they'll compensate by mixing the DI signal with the amp sound. Yes, and this is exactly what we provide uh, in the profiler. You establish a parallel path, and this is how we call it, parallel path, that's the feature. Perfect. Uh, we establish a DI path that passes along in parallel along the whole signal flow, mm -hmm. but it will also take two effect two effect slots, so you can you still have the ability to run, for example, an equalizer or a compressor on that parallel path, right? Mm -hmm. And there's still enough effect slots in that in that original path. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you can you can do this uh, like in the instrument and store it per preset. Right, I mean this cool. this, this parallel path, yeah. and that's a nice thing. So we we had some bass players already here uh, playing that. It's it's really fun. Yeah, that's huge. Awesome. Cool. Well, best of luck to you in 2000, 2014, and I'm looking forward to hearing all new stuff. Thank awesome. you very much. Pleasure. Yeah. Kemper, Nam 2014. Thanks for watching. <laughs>